My name is Connor. I'm with the Gitcoin team. Uh, we have a few people from the Mysterium team here to talk about their can't be censored uh, challenges as well as the, their bounties in the Funding the Future hackathon. So um, I think, let's see, we're at 18 people. Um, people might trickle in, but um, let's feel free to get started, Charmini, if you want to uh, give a little intro on, on why you guys are here and what you're working on. Amazing. Thank you so much, Connor. Um, so everyone, thank you so much for joining us. And we are working on mysterious bounties and we've partnered with Gitcoin over here for funding the future um, to drive more open source development on our project Mysterium Network. We're building a decentralized distributed open permissionless network. And um, we're looking at working with you guys to build more consumer level applications. I'd like to introduce Ampanas, who is going by Zolia today, and Yaro, who is um, also in the call. So Antanas does, um, leads our network and is our CTO, and Yaro is our head of product over at Mysterium Network. For all your questions, they will, you are in very safe hands. Yeah, yeah, hi everyone. Thank you for gathering here. Uh, nice to see so many people here. Uh, we really appreciate you coming here just to listen to what you have to say. And, um, uh, our main topic here is to explain what you can do with Mr. Network and how you can do it. So, uh, I, I, yeah, I just uh, want to introduce a bit uh, our, our team member, Yara, who is mainly will be presenting today and have prepared some, some slides. Um, you can write your questions down or ask, uh, after the presentation, but we would very like to answer them all. So if we don't have time to answer them all now, we will do it uh, offline or in, during the chat uh, for other means. Thanks. Awesome. And then right before we kick off, so I just have a quick poll um, I want to give everyone, basically asking how familiar uh, they are with Mysterium. So I'm going to launch that now. And let me make you guys uh, both co-hosts so you can also see the results. All right, we got some answers coming in. All right, we'll give it another 10 seconds. We have 14 votes out of 21. Can you guys, are you guys able to see the, the uh, results right now? I am. Awesome. So it looks like we have a ton of new people to Mysterium, um, which is great because hopefully they have a few questions. All right, let's share the results. One second. All right, so people should be able to see the results. It looks like 67% per, of people have uh, no experience with Mysterium. Uh, and we have a couple other people who are closer to experts, but um, I think that's good data to have as we get started. So um, yeah, I guess let's, let's start you know, from the beginning. And um, I'm excited to hear what Mysterium is all about and to get some more of our, our hackers uh, familiar with you guys. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, you... let's start, yeah, with a short introduction and then with questions. Uh, so, I, I'm going to share my screen. Can you see my screen, guys? Yep. Yeah. Cool. So, um, what is Mysterium? It's a network. A distributed network of nodes which are providing VPN service in exchange for cryptocurrency. So usually people uh, look to VPN service as something you either you're running your own, either your bank account in some centralized uh, company, uh, and uh, and then you're using their servers to uh, exit uh, somewhere in the internet. The problem with that approach is that uh, that centralized place still can have uh, access uh, 
to the uh, exit locks and many other issues. And in terms of Mysterium, we do have the pool of people who are launching different uh, kind of uh, uh, nodes. That could be data center nodes, that could be nodes on Raspberry Pis at their home, that could be uh, exit node uh, run on their computer and available just uh, while they are not using internet or something like that. And, um, and uh, actually, the moment we already have uh, it on testnet, we are going, we are working uh, very hard to go to mainnet uh, this summer or earlier. Uh, but even at, uh, at the moment, 600 active providers, sometimes we have 800 active providers which are providing uh, exit uh, uh, pools. Most of them are in UK, United States, Italy, uh, Germany, uh, as you see on maps, those dots, but actually we do have exit nodes in many places uh, all around the globe. And we do have users. Uh, at the moment we have about 10,000 people who are already using. And we don't do active promotion at this stage because we, we would like to build first uh, prepared product for people to use. But still, people are finding us somehow and they are using it. So it's proving uh, and it's giving us big, big hope that we are doing something very useful. Uh, it's interesting to see that most users are from India, Iran, Pakistan, Indonesia, United Emirates, uh, Arab uh, Emirates, uh, Turkey, China. So the whole all places where you could imagine that they have problems with uh, governments and different limitations uh, could be there. Uh, India, it's a little bit surprising, but uh, still. And um, the aim of our network is to have residential, mostly residential nodes, but still data center nodes also are possible. Why residential nodes? Because uh, there are many services when you go uh, to, to, to use them, which will try to detect if you are uh, not VPN user. And if, for example, somebody is traveling and uh, would like to watch Netflix, uh, BBC from outside of UK, for example, uh, he, he is not able to reach that. And if you, he will use just data center node or he will use centralized VPN, most probably BBC will still say that that's a VPN service and it's not available for you. But via Mysterium exit nodes, which are mostly at homes for, uh, of people homes, uh, it's totally possible. And uh, let's, let's move a little bit forward. So this network has a couple of components, uh, main, main infrastructure things. So we do have uh, consumers and providers. So uh, what is consumer? It's a client application, you would think. But actually, our uh, software, uh, we, we, we do have the repo on GitHub called Node. Uh, it's a software written in Golang. And uh, that's a, a software which could be run in a uh, consumer mode or in provider mode. And actually consumer applications could be built different ones and they can use this node software uh, as a library. I will talk a little bit later about that. And provider nodes also could be run in Linux machines, maybe on Mac machines. They could have inter a UI interface or common, a common line interface, but still uh, those interfaces will be using uh, this uh, node implementation. And uh, while consumer is connecting to provider, first he's doing discovery and watching for available providers on the network and is able to filter out providers by country, by type of IP, for example, residential, or just IP with big bandwidth. And maybe I don't care to, to have residential IP, but I need better speed performance. And then they are establishing a VPN tunnel. At the moment we support two protocols, but actually our software can support a couple of different protocols. We support OpenVPN and WireGuard. 
uh, protocols, uh, but it's extendable. It could be also proxy, socket five. It could be even Tor. <laughs> so, so, so you could uh, try to use VPN when you need VPN, like exit to Netflix. And when you want even more privacy, you, you have one additional hope. Uh, and uh, there is uh, something uh, we call Hermes Hub, because uh, actually we are using for payments, we are using a um, second layer solution on top of Ethereum blockchain. It's somehow similar to how Lightning Network works, uh, just simplified model adapted to our cases. And uh, Hermes, uh, uh, it's a hub through which uh, with which uh, consumers and providers are establishing payment channels. I will talk a little bit more about payment infrastructure later. Uh, our most useful, like uh, uh, currently we have one client application uh, ready to use. It's a mo mobile Android application. Uh, it's also open source. Uh, and uh, you can find uh, in our GitHub uh, just go github.com slash Mysterium Network, and here you will find Mysterium VPN Mobile. And here you can uh, get the code of our mobile application. You can extend it. It's an open source license. Uh, and uh, you, you can use it uh, or, or contribute to us. Um, it especially could be interesting for people who would like to jump into challenge to adapt it to... TVs, because one of our challenge is make our mobile application uh, feasible for uh, Android TVs. So it's mostly playing with screen resolutions and stuff like that. It's a very good task to start. And it's also a good solution for people who would like to watch those streaming services via Mysterium Network. Um, yes. And uh, so uh, in our Android application, like, and there are two ways how you can use our node software. Uh, one is as using our uh, node as a library, static linking with it, as we do in our mobile application. So in general, uh, in general we, 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 ha we have published uh, on like this Maven package, which, uh, with different node versions, which you, you can uh, import into your Kotlin or J Java code or mobile code. And then you are able to access uh, some functions exposed from our node. For example, if we would go to our node repo, uh, we, 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 we can try to find like mobile and uh, here there are a couple of entry points. Uh, for example, uh, you, can, like, you can get proposals. Uh, uh, that means connecting, uh, as uh, previously was uh, stated, uh, your consumer app, you're calling that API, go, going to discovery, getting proposals from providers, and showing the list of those proposals. Uh, so that's, uh, and then you have one binary application and it it's works very nice. The maybe limitation for that is that you, you need to build native applications. And for those people who would like to build not exactly native application or they are not able to use static linking in their software, we do have API, RESTful type of API. We call it Tequila API. Uh, we will provide uh, more like links to all those documentations, uh, but there is a Tequila API uh, documentation uh, where you, like in general, when you're running Node software, uh, it's uh, on local host on port uh, 4050, it exposes this API where you, 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 you can get session sta status, you, 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 you can get uh, uh, authentication things, uh, your current connection. Uh, like 
it's 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 fairly easy it's it's as you usually use any apis it just will be run in the same node and to help people to understand how to work with that because our strategy um, is to build layered solution so we as a team would like to work on base layer on the main components as a node itself as a discovery service and we are hoping uh, uh, and we are building also infra layer uh, in infrastructure layer so some kind of filters or this account like this hermes hub for payment solution uh, but and user applications ideally uh, should be built as we envision by other people so we are providing two reference implementations as our android application and our uh, working now on desktop application. Uh, one moment, I will show you for you. Yeah, this one. Uh, so, uh, uh, Mysterium Network, Mysterium uh, VPN desktop uh, uh, application, which has some uh, instructions how, 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 how it works. Uh, and uh, I, I, the idea is that uh, you can spin up either electron application. In our case, we are using uh, uh, Node Qt, like the uh, uh, JavaScript library, which is uh, uh, help you to build Qt interfaces with JavaScript. And uh, when this application is starting, it's also in background running the Mysterium Node process. And then uh, so, so it's a desktop app which is running node process and it's running one more process we call supervisor uh, it's 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 a background process which is checking if the node itself is up or down it can if something is happening with uh, this uh, node process supervisor will uh, try to launch it again so that your ui would have the access to to your uh, like uh, to, to to the node itself all the time, and finally, it's a pro, uh, could be built as binary and provided to end user as a uh, binary. So there are document some documentation how the, uh, it works, and it's built with a uh, uh, React user interface, fairly easy to read code for people uh, who usually use React because you can see all the logic how it's using maybe you will have to learn this uh, react node GUI which is a little bit different than electron but for people who would like to spin off any kind of different things that could be very good also a, a reference implementation how to build on top of mysterium network yes and maybe because we are on hackathon which is also for mostly people who are interested in crypto i would like to explain a little bit more how our payments works and why this way not another so the the problem of blockchain micro payments like in in such a solution as mysterium you have providers and consumers and it's not very possible that consumer will pay in front for provider because they don't know each other. So if consumer would pay subscription for one month for the network, providers could just disappear and get his money. If you will pay one hour in front, it, you can just disappear. But also provider is not able to give you service uh, with uh, like not getting payments. So if provider would say, okay, connect to me after you will finish your session, you will pay me. Uh, it's also not true because then consumer can disappear and the provider will never get payments. So we have to charge uh, really often. Uh, at the moment, we are charging each minute. So providers are trying to charge each min minute for consumer. And when we are talking about charging, we mean, uh, we mean that we are charging super small amounts like 0 0.005 cent if that would be in usd amount yeah so it's a super small transactions uh, 
blockchains are cool, secure, censorship resistant, have open permissionless APA, but that would be totally impossible for us to use it. PayPal also is not an option because they are charging 25 cents per transaction. So we needed something and like blockchain would be too slow. Like you, you need settlement time and we need like instant settlement. So, so, so you, like you can wait a couple of seconds, but not more. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah. So there are a couple of concepts around uh, micropayments uh, on blockchain. Even, you know, guys, uh, Satoshi itself had a uh, payment channel solution in the first Bitcoin version. It was just not very secure because it was relying on miners, but there, there was already a solution for that. So let's look uh, on generic logic because maybe some people are not... Uh, not, 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 not th th that much uh, uh, already did, uh, discovered that. Uh, so we have Alice and Bob. And if Alice and Bob would put to some kind of smart contract called payment channel, for example, or state channel on Ethereum, usually called some kind of co coins, they could then send to each other signed transactions of the balance of this uh, smart contract. Like he, now Alice has four, Bob has six, now Alice has three, Bob has seven. And that's in gen, generally that's a signed transaction by both parties who agrees with the, the signatures of both parties, but they don't send that transaction to blockchain because they could do that at any moment of time. And while they are sending that, they are finishing and then some of them decide to close channel. Uh, in our case, we call that set on chain that could be after month of their communication, after a couple of years communication, whatever, after one hour, when they are comfortable, you just settle and then both get their tokens. Um, the problem is in, if you would just use payment channels uh, in Mysterium, like we already have 600 providers at the moment and we have 10,000 consumers. Okay, not each consumer was used each provider, but to get more privacy and all the things, consumer most probably will try to get at least channels with 10 or 20 providers. So we would have a lot of on-chain transactions just to, to establish payment channels to them. And uh, actually there is one uh, DVPN which decided to go that direc uh, direction. And then you have big problem because each hour you're kind of doing new Ethereum transaction to blockchain, to renew balances, to like, it's, it's very expensive. Even if they are sending each minute and you're still getting cut of costs, it's not enough. It's definitely not enough. It's too expensive and, uh, and also establish channel takes time because they have to make a transaction to blockchain. So you have to know in advance that you're using this uh, uh, provider that's definitely not working. So there is an uh, also notion of something similar to digital checks people used before. Uh, we call them payment promises. And uh, in payment promises, we assume that uh, people that uh, like paying in one direction. So, 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 so just imagine that uh, Alice is uh, topping up their smart, uh, his smart contract and Alice is a consumer, yeah? He has a mobile application, just says, look guys, on my account, on blockchain, I have 20 tokens. And then I am sending different, of, uh, each of you, some amount of tokens. And then uh, I, I, I gave, for example, for Dave, 11 tokens. And I could give for Bob nine tokens and Carol 15. And then who first is trying to settle from that smart contract that will get money. The, the, the last one will not get because there is a possibility of double spend. The plus of this approach is that Alice is doing once transaction to blockchain. He can use the same channel for millions of users, like millions of providers. And they are just going to settle. But the problem is double spending uh, problem. Uh, so, so, so actually, uh, what the 
current solution which most of networks doing, they are doing payment via intermediaries. And to, to have a secure payment via intermediaries, uh, let's imagine that we are established uh, these lines, it's, uh, it's payment channels between different people. So Alice pays Bob, Bob pays Carol, Carol Dave. And we just imagine that uh, if Alice would like to pay to Dave, she would give some money for Bob, Bob would transfer to Carol, Carol to Dave. If somebody looked to a uh, Lightning Network, that the uh, generic solution of Lightning Network, it's, uh, and it's done in the way that the final uh, receiver of transaction is creating something called hash lock or like kind of invoice and saying, look, I am expecting from you one token, but uh, uh, I am sending you this special hash lock. That's a um, hash of some random number, which only Dave knows. And if I will not get money, I will not reveal uh, this number. So when Bob is getting uh, transaction from Alice, Bob kind of could not send forward, but he don't know this R, random number, so it's worthless transaction for, for, for him, and if he would like to get uh, like uh, some reward for this resending, he, he will send forward. And then Dave will start revealing the, this key to Carl, and all of them will reveal back, and then we have settled transaction. It takes second or so, uh, the problem when you're building such a network of many people in a row uh, that you have to construct the network. That's why Lightning Network is built so long. There are so many edge cases. When you try to do transaction, one of them can disappear. Uh, and actually, in our case, it uh, could be simpler. Uh, so we did simplified lightweight solution of what Lightning Network does. We call it Hermes. It's a god of wealth. And uh, in our uh, case, uh, like just imagine that consumer is sending m money to some kind of hub or accountant service, which will resend money to provider. Only one hub always. No more hops, only one hop. There could be a couple of con uh, these Hermeses or accountants on the network, uh, but always uh, only one hop, uh, so it's no problems with routing. And many consumers can establish uh, channels with one accountant and send to provider. And actually, the consumer in our case is doing top up to his channel. He's he can do top up many times. He can do that directly from uh, from exchange. He has the address uh, wallet on which is smart, uh, we host uh, this channel smart contract, and it's reusable uh, smart contracts differently than in Lightning Network when you sometimes have to rebalance things. Then you have to establish new addresses, new, new uh, doing new transactions. In our case you are just topping up this address and uh, you send payments to provider, not through accountant, because uh, maybe provider can risk that 0 0.0005 cents and not even try to talk to accountant because accountant can be not available for a second or disappear. So in our case, we first send transaction to provider and then provider in some moment of time when he has this transaction, which accountant would go and get money from blockchain, he's trying to exchange. So accountant, I will give transaction which will give you money for 11 tokens and please give me back transaction which will give me money for 10 tokens. Accountants can get money for that. And uh, finally, everyone can settle to, 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 to on chain. And we see that now uh, with the, our testnet, people are settling once in a couple of months. So you just wait until your balance will grow a lot and it's saving us a lot. Uh, so yeah, so that's generic idea about uh, that.
our, our infrastructure. And the, the main places where you could go to get, I, I think that we will send some kind of email to, for you guys with our documentation, because on uh, our web page, uh, we are now on rework. We were very concentrated on uh, attracting providers and uh, we are now on work to, 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 to show something for uh, developers as well. But there is a um, developer's documentation, one of the sources, which uh, we are working, like we, we will be updating and you can get that, Docs Mysterium Network. Uh, also our uh, GitHub uh, is like, like most what is not needed. Our GitHub is could be very useful solution. So that's a note a repo and the uh, reference implementation of Mysterium VPN mobile and Mysterium VPN desktop. For those who would like to look on how it works, that's uh, uh, solutions which you could check, look how they work. And I think that now uh, it's uh, time for Q&A and you can ask questions. I need to connect my computer to charger, but I think that Antanas can answer any of your question. Awesome, thank you so much for that. That was really informative. Um, I know that, that I learned a lot. I did not know how everything worked as far as payments and, and whatnot went, so uh, very cool. Um, so looking at the chat right now, uh, Santiago says, where can I find more info about your payment channel and API? Yeah, so so basically Yaro uh, did, did write the so-called white paper on the payments. So you can go to our GitHub, GitHub probably I can share a screen. Uh, if uh, I already sharing, so I, uh, oh, yeah. on yeah, GitHub, yeah. you just look for smart contracts, a repo, uh, payment smart contracts repo. So here are all the smart contracts and also you, you can get a white paper. It was called initially accountant pattern. We will we will upgrade a little bit because we, we we learn some additional tricks and it will be called Hermes. So in this uh, white paper, you can you can read some examples, reasoning, all the things, and also you can look on smart co contracts itself. Uh, for those who are GoLang coders, uh, we have bindings uh, bindings for our payment smart contracts. So there is a payment repo in which you, you, you can get all the needed payment related packages for Go developers. Yeah, and, then, and as for API itself, we have generic API we call Tequila API. It's REST-based API and uh, there are a couple of calls uh, which are related to payments. So for example, to get the balance uh, status, to top up, to settle, uh, so you can find, find the implementation there. Uh, also, you can look uh, how it is done in, in our source code. And we are looking for, looking for ways to implement other type of APIs in the future. But at the moment, it's, it's the, the basic one, which is called Tequila API. I've posted the link in, in the chat for everyone to, to look after. Awesome, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and then one, this wasn't really a question, but something that uh, Waleed said earlier that I thought was interesting. Um, he said, it would be interesting to build this into the Brave browser. The browser plugin challenge on the Mysterium Bounties page could not be more suggestive, suggestive of that, or perhaps I am seeing things. Um, yeah, so I guess, Going off of that, you know, what is your opinion of Brave, and is that something that you guys want to see built? Yep. 
I mean, so, we're happy to see any kind of um, collaboration across open source projects, across distributed projects. We want to see um, and consumer and products that actually tackle the in, like interconnected underlying layers. So yes, of course, if you, if you want to do that, we'd be more than happy to, um, to see that submission. If you want to think about other configurations of other yeah. toolkits that you want to involve, yeah, go for gold. That's why uh, we have the mystery challenge. I really would be happy to see Brave plugin. Uh, I do think that uh, it could be a little bit tricky because VPNs are using layer free networking uh, on networking and browsers are not very happy with that. So a uh, generic uh, plugin should use a proxy type of API, HTTPS proxy. Uh, we do have uh, not finally merged uh, pull request for socket five for support, but I do believe that uh, if someone would really like to jump on that, that's totally doable, even without collaboration with Brave directly, like talking to them, because I think that technically, if we would try to approach them and, and uh, talk to them, please, uh, uh, have a built-in native solution as they have for uh, Tor. Uh, that will just uh, require a little bit more time and uh, collaboration between, between Brave core, uh, core team and our team. But I really do hope that we will do that eventually. And maybe with Firefox as well. Yeah. One thing I wanted to quickly flag is um, it seemed like our Discord link was broken and I've updated them on the GitHub. So please jump into our Discords. Um, Yaro's always in Discord. We've got a bunch of our core development team in Discord. Ask questions over there as you run into roadblocks. We're here to help. We want to hear your ideas. We want to understand what you see as a potential with our network of nodes. Yep, absolutely. So we updated the, the join our Discord link on all five of the Gitcoin bounties, and I also just dropped it uh, in the chat for you guys. Another question just came in. What are some example applications you'd like to see for the hackathon? Yeah, the, uh, I, can, I can mention a couple of, and then uh, Antanas will mention a couple of even more technical. <laughs> So uh, we already posted a couple of uh, challenge, uh, like uh, the, 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 the most wanted things, which could be even more than the uh, uh, limitations of this hackathon. But uh, one of things is, like I mentioned already, Android TV app. Uh, be, I, and I do believe that this one is doable in two weeks because we do have a mobile application from Android and that would mean extend that to, 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 to look maybe how, how differently it should work with the clients. Another thing was iOS application uh, for mobile phones. Uh, we, like uh, th th that's something uh, we wanted to build by ourselves, but then we decided that if someone will jump and do something that's uh, that's the, the, the ideal thing and we are ready to pay bounty for that and, and that's something you can just show as a prototype during hackathon and work later on till really working solution so so, so that's uh, true uh, and facing things uh, actually because we are uh, the third thing what is much more crypto related is uh, because we are using the same HTLC thing as Lightning Network does, there is theoretical possibility uh, to, to have uh, consumers who are paying their Lightning Network for Hermes Hub, and Hermes Hub could pay via his Ethereum-based channels uh, in different currency, like doing atomic swap inside, inside him to, to the providers. So if somebody would like to work more on the research type of things, what does it mean? 
to have Lightning support, Lightning network support, what the pluses, minuses, uh, maybe even small prototype of something that would be super awesome. Or if uh, the, there is not mentioned as a separate challenge, but as an idea for anything else, because we have the anything else category. Uh, uh, if you would like to build a browser for our second player solution, like block, like this payments channels browser. So you go, you, you put your uh, Mysterium identity uh, and it shows you that uh, here is your balance, here is your uh, top-up channel, here is your provider's channel, how, how is how much you earned, connects to Hermes and just uh, connects to blockchain, to Ethereum to show, to visual, visual, visualize these payment things. So that's from me. And I think that Antanas has something to, to, to add. Yeah. So basically, the network is very young, so we lack lots of infrastructure things, so we, which would uh, enable our developers and uh, users of network more convenient user, usage of network itself. For example, we, we have a set of uh, so-called oracles that sort of services which uh, bring to the network certain functionality. For example, we have a so-called quality oracle. He, this, this service tries to collect some sort of anonymized data to best suggest uh, for incoming consumer or client which node best fit for, for, for him, for example. Or to collect some sort of metrics which would determine, uh, for example, in the time of the day, which node is best for certain service. So that kind of infrastructure is very needed. So if you have thoughts how to proceed with it, uh, even in implementing one or just uh, giving a shot and trying to, to host and run such service would really uh, help. We're trying to build in the node itself the uh, free bindings for such services so that all our calls uh, for such services should be standardized. You can see from uh, the, our source code how, how such services can be used. Uh, other, other track or other way we are looking for is to extend our pluggable services. For example, as Yaro said, we currently see we have OpenVPN and um, WireGuard transport protocol. Also, we have SOX in development, um, SOX 5 in development. But that means our framework can support any set of pluggable services. And those services can be built into in, in development. And uh, as a, that yeah. we have, uh, because we have also announced something in bounties, and one of the announcements, when announcements was to make Windows possible to, to be a client. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so there is a bigger d description, but uh, generally our current uh, uh, node, uh, it, after we added payments, because of some tricks uh, with uh, uh, Go Ethereum and uh, some other th uh, things, uh, I think that related to WireGuard, uh, it's, um, uh, on, it's not yet running on Windows. Uh, we will do that, but if someone of you would do that as a challenge, uh, because that's one of the most wanting thing uh, from community. Uh, yeah. And uh, so like we have this desktop application for Mac. If you would make that for Windows, that's amazing. Uh, you're the winner. Uh, we actually had uh, implementation for Windows, so you can, for reference, can look at it. Uh, it used to, to be working, we just broke it and do it. Uh, Yara, what said, compatibility issues, it's nothing, not doable, it's, it's, it, but we just, as a small team, we don't have spare hands on that at the moment. So uh, this Windows application really would attract more consumers to the network. 
Yeah. And uh, what's else? Else, as I said, I there was a, there was sorry, just sorry to interrupt. I just want to keep us moving. Um, so there was a question on who our competitors were, like as well. Like I just wanted to address that question from the from the community. So Yara, do you want to stop step in with that one, or Antanas, and either one of you? Like, yeah, like uh, who are our comp uh, competitors? So. Um, Let's put it this way, like if you, if you would talk for direct competitors, that would be ORCID protocol, that would be Sentinel uh, project, that would be Privatix. Uh, so that's all of like, I don't know more like DVPN, which are really, really similar in terms that they are using incentivization on top of privacy services. You could say that our competitors are such companies as uh, uh, NordVPN and all the centralized guys, because we are providing alternative, which is decentralized al alternative to those big centralized companies. And we are trying to disrupt the way how we are thinking about this solution. Uh, I would not say that Tor is kind of uh, our competitor because we are not competing with, with Tor, but it's uh, uh, but Mysterium is something like Tor with incentivization, because on Tor you are just running uh, exit nodes, and in Mysterium you are running exit nodes with additional payments for that. You could charge zero if you want, but it, there is a possibility to, to charge. So it's kind of, but Tor is much more focused on anonymity. Uh, Mysterium is fo focused on uh, being useful uh, in most cases uh, when like uh, anonymity is something we will add as a pluggable Tor into Mysterium network. Uh, we, we don't try to make super anonymous. We, we, we are talking about privacy. We are talking about no locks policy. It means that Mysterium is not able to have centralized locks at all because we have a distributed network and we are really uh, into usability and having residential IPs. So people could access, especially those streaming, streaming services, all the ser services, maybe build a scraping uh, solution on top of our API. That's actually also could be a solution like scraping tool, because uh, when you're doing that via Tor, some sites will really easily identify that you're using Tor and will not allow your scrapers to do that. Uh, but via Mysterium, we kind of would like to go to that direction. Cool, very cool. Um, and then one more thing I just wanted to, to show off and clarify really quick was that, um, so there's, there's a few different challenges going on with this event. Um, and this is a bit like unorthodox from what we usually do at Gitcoin, um, but Mysterium has been running this larger can't be censored challenge, um, I think since the beginning of March and it goes to about mid April. Uh, and so this will, um, there's 10,000 in cash prizes total. And it has these six categories that I think we kind of touched on briefly, but I would recommend uh, checking that out if, if you're curious. And then for funding the future, uh, we have five different challenges that are very similar, pretty much based off those same prompts. Um, but at the end of this two week event, so on March 30th, uh, we'll, uh, Mysterium will be giving out one ETH for the winner of each of these challenges. So whoever has the best project in this two week period. Uh, but on top of that, then you can continue working on it um, for another two weeks and actually have a shot at the full 5,000 or $10,000. So hopefully that cleared things up if anyone was curious. Um, it, it does look like, you know, there's still a lot of work to be done on these ones. There's, there's only two uh, star work so far. So plenty of opportunity to uh, take home an ETH and, potentially take home uh, much, much more if you can continue working on it. So uh, I just wanted to flag that. Um, happy to answer any well, questions. One of the things I really wanted to leave everyone with is we're looking, we're a grassroots run um, open source project. Yeah, we're looking at trying to build an ecosystem with you guys. So please feel like you can reach us. Please feel like 
you are building something that has longevity and contributing to an ecosystem because that's what we want to do with these collaborations with Gitcoin, with these collaborations with you guys. I, I even believe that uh, if you would build something, you, 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 you could continue and even try to make some kind of business model on top of Mysterium. We already have one app which decided that uh, it's called Portals VPN. Uh, they decided that p for people paying in crypto would be hard. So let's add uh, fiat payments. And they're taking care to pay node runners in, in crypto, but their consumers are buying from them sub subscription plans and they try to somehow be uh, positive on how, uh, how, how people are using. So, uh, so there is like we are really because when I look on some other uh, solutions, some of them deciding to go with the strategy that our app is main app and everyone should use that app. Uh, Mysterium is more like e Ethereum itself as a foundation, you know, like in Ethereum, you're using different wallets. They are building core node and people are jumping uh, into that by building wallets. And with VPN, it's, surprisingly but already monetizable because people are spending billions of dollars yearly on vpn services already i don't believe any atheist that i've ever seen debate with you could you repeat i, I think that may have just been a video or something that, that yeah. someone played <laughs> um cool yeah, we have one more question, um, and, and this one may not have an answer, or it may kind of be the same with traditional VPNs, but um, what happens if someone's doing illegal activities um, and using your IP? Are you responsible? Is that, has that been, uh, has that came up before? You know, are we going to have to wait for a lawsuit to, to figure it out? As, as, as for any, I don't, I can start answering this question. As for any distributed system, it's, it's, uh, um, there's no, no, no centralized entity being responsible. And, and that, that's how we trying to operate. Because if we uh, are getting us to be responsible for each and every transaction inside the network, so this, that would make pro probably um, impossible to operate in, in such mode uh, in due to legal uh, things uh, and differences uh, in, in legal regulation between the, the countries. And um, in any way, since transaction is happening directly peer to peer, so yeah, it's, it's usually the question of those two sides. As uh, from our uh, side of things we encourage and we do try to suggest uh, node runners uh, how they should behave in, in such situations uh, but um, there's no no single correct answer, answer to this because it depends from the legal jurisdiction your node, node is running for some uh, countries it's not even important uh, because there's no obligation for um, internet uh, user to report any data. For some countries, is it's very important, but um, but one rule of thumb is that uh, if you cannot prove uh, that uh, this traffic did not go through your through your node, uh, and that if those uh, who searches for clues or searches for for proof find the proof that indeed this transaction or originated on your computer then you're busted sort of uh, they still have to prove that this transaction did originate from your computer in most jurisdictions i cannot speak for for any jurisdiction in in, in the whole world it's somehow you know similar as uh, when you're using open wi-fi on internet cafe yeah. So, so people can also uh, use that for any kind of activity. And uh, there is like uh, our nodes, it's kind of open access points to the internet. So mostly uh, that's if somebody is running our node, he could look on regulations on his 
jurisdiction, how, how, how that open access point should act. Uh, our consumers, when they are using our app, they are checking these checkboxes that they promise not to do any legal things. But that's what usually open access points have to do. <laughs> Just to ask for that check. Yeah. Good question. Um, I think I think in the next few years we're going to see a lot of things pop up, not just with VPNs, but you know with blockchains. And I think the questions have already been raised in the past few years about you know what if you put something illegal on the Bitcoin blockchain. And anyway, um, I think the uh, the the centralized world is changing, and it's going to be a, a fun future. <laughs> yeah. And then answering this, this question uh, in, from another angle a bit, currently we are in development of another feature, so-called uh, uh, traffic slicing. It's sort of a bit uh, arguable feature, but in general it would let you as a node runner to define which services you do want to allow. Uh, it's a bit of com complex, but for example, if consumer wants to access just to Facebook, so he sh should be able to find your node, which advertises to the network that I provide just to Facebook, for example. And that would sort of guarantee you more or less um, security to run the node, even though you don't want to open up it completely. So. Yeah. Speaking of future, so it's, it's a little bit future things because we are thinking how to protect uh, providers. Yeah. But the, the, the biggest value we're providing, it's uh, residential APs. And uh, actually, be, if you would combine Tor plus traffic slicing, so if some consumer is connecting to your node and you're advertising that I'm providing like... Uh, what is like I'm providing Facebook, YouTube, uh, Netflix, BBC A player, something like that. And then if he's going to something different, you're just uh, sending him f via Tor, just additional hope. So, so, so consumer still has access. It just will be, you know, like going to one service, you get one IP address, going to another service, you're getting Tor type of uh, IP address. So, uh, but it's, it's something in works maybe for end of this year because there are many complex uh, things how to make e e user experience nice, uh, many, many things. Still make it private, but secure, it's, it's quite complex. Got it. Yeah, that, that makes a ton of sense. Um, I, I like the hard questions coming in, you know, it makes you, uh, makes you think a bit more, but um, all right, so we are approaching the end of the hour. Uh, we definitely went way over, but I'm pretty happy with that because the conversation was great and it seems like people are still here, still interested. Um, so before we sign off, does anyone have any quick final questions for the Mysterium team? All right, then I think we are good. So um, like we said, you can find the, their whole team in the Discord. We have the link in the chat. It's also on the Gitcoin bounties. Um, feel free to reach out to me as well on either the Discord or on Gitcoin chat if you have more questions. Uh, and thank you all for joining. And especially thank you to Sharmini and, and Jaro and, and the whole Mysterium team for uh, pr presenting to us. That was, that was really cool. Um, I'm actually way more interested in this now and, and I might have to go give it a try. <laughs> Thanks. Amazing. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. Thank you very much for the presentation.